one three hundred five six four six five two. If you would like to give us a call, tell us what's on your mind. All you've got to do is pick up the telephone. Oh, God, we've got Norman. We might as well get it over and done with him. Norman, are you there? Hello, John. Listen, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your callers, the people who ring up. Now, people out there, please ring up and be honest with him and tell him to go. You're pathetic, John. You're very sad. You're sad, John. It's pathetic to listen to you. If you were a dog, John, I'd take you to the vet and have you put down. Oh, you just, you've got arthritis. You've got the mange. The way you look, my God, you've got the mange. Okay? You've got, you've got to be crippled. You're, you're all hunched over. You're pathetic. Just. Just give it away, okay? It's painful to listen to you every morning. And I'm sure the callers out there, if you were honest people out there, you'd ring up and tell him to go. Why? Okay? why, why? Ex- not, excuse excuse me a minute. On. Norman, excuse me a moment. You disgusting, unbelievably not, incredible grub. Now listen I'm to me. Why do, you listen to the, why do you listen to the program? What I'm you, looking after you, John. And what, what the hell are you talking? What are you talking about anyway, Norman? I don't know what you're talking about. Every day, you're always coughing. You, the only thing good thing about you is probably your, probably your voice, and that's going okay. Oh, it's no, pathetic. No. Haven't you got a life outside the radio? Oh yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty pitiful, isn't it? That you can't give it away and have a life. You're the pitiful else. one. No, no, you've got to turn up every day, and you look. You're so cranky. You're short tempered <laughs> with everybody, aren't you? No, hey, no, I'm not. No. Up with anybody anymore. Oh, you cut them off real quickly, get rid of them. Everybody out there agrees with me, right? And they just can't tell you the honest truth. I'm telling you the honest truth. You're gone. You're past it, John. Please, you're just a sad, pitiful wreck of a man standing behind a probably a copper microphone now, you know. You're just <laughs> sitting there, slouch. Probably somebody's got a you know, sit you up and stop you from dribbling. Your mother's superior come around, wipe your mouth, you know, and all this stuff. God, you, God you're a nasty piece of work, Norman. Bit, you really spoon, are a disgusting spoon creature. Spoon feed you, spoon feed you, you know, put a little bib around your neck, you know, you know, spoon feed you so you don't dribble all over the microphone. You turn your, turn your little gold one copper and, you know, you're just... You're pathetic. Don't you ever listen to yourself, eh? When you get on there, you have, you don't know what real life. Hey Norman, is, John. What, uh, Norman, what a what a pity real you don't listen is, to yourself. Do you? Oh, you don't know pity. what real life is, John. Oh yes, I do. Yes, You're I living do. Living your little ivory tower. Anyway, Norman, you know, uh, Norman, he's put up for you, Norman. I, I, d- I don't intend to have a discussion with you. I think you're a despicable human being. In fact, it's a, it's a shame for everybody else on, on the planet that you were even called a human being. You're just a grub. You're just, a, I, you're just an, an evil, nasty-minded, narrow-minded little man, and yet you listen every day. You're obsessed. Oh, your problem, I'll tell you your problem. You're absolutely obsessed with me. That's your problem. You're probably in love with me. Oh no! Do you want, what about you and Gladys? Oh, you, 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 you love Gladys. Oh, I, d- I, I don't think Gladys. Seen is... Anybody pour over a politician the way you do over Gladys? Oh no, I'm good oh, at I'm good at doing oh, that. When I want to do it, I'm good. Gladys. Good at doing oh, that. Oh, oh, please, Norman, enough, enough. Bring up Gladys and talk to her. Enough, I'm Norman. I'm just saying, please, John. You, you're doing us. Do us a favour. Look, look, go away, Norman. Enough is enough, and it really is. Do you get pleasure out of that, you creepy man? You really are. You're just kind of a horrible person. I'm, I get very disappointed to know that when I think of the people that I've had in my life, one of whom I lost recently, as you know, when I think of those people and people I still have in my life, like the Commander-in-Chief and the Mother Superior, to think that there are creepy people in the world like you, Norman, that are so unpleasant you bring the level of the entire universe down with your behaviour, you're just a nasty little grub. I'd love to see you. One day I would love to see you face to face, not because I want to hit you, even though I might like to hit you, I wouldn't. But I'd just love to see what kind of look you have on your face. Are you, is, your, is your face as screwed up as, uh, as the rest of you? I mean, your mind certainly is, uh, is screwed up. I can't believe you, Norman. I don't want to believe you. and I, 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 I've got to take the calls because I say, tell me what's on your mind. So I take your calls as I take anybody else's. And if you want to ring back and have another go, by all means. But you're jealous. That's your problem. The Mother Superior has uh, summed up the situation perfectly. It is jealousy 
Simple as that. <laughs>